what's up PhD friends welcome to another video in today's video I'm gonna be talking about how you can build up your skills and experience if you want to break into medical writing now if you watch this video I did here I talked about four different types of medical writing roles these are general categories every medical science writer is going to do something slightly different depending on where they are and so it's really going to be important for you to familiarize yourself with the types of documents that are written in various industries or in the industry that you want to go into so for instance i work in the marketing space for life and health science companies and so most of the documents i write tend to be marketing focused they tend to have the intent that somebody would read and be educated on something or read and be interested in buying something or engaging the services of that particular company right so it's a marketing science writer role and so i tend to write more blog content social media content content that may go into paid advertisements um white papers ebooks all of these are educational case studies that are sort of an extended sort of testimonial that showcase other people's um you know their, their their product in use right and so i tend to write these types of documents so if you wanted to come into a role like mine then you would want to begin to think about how those types of documents are written or look for how they are written and so if you um happen to have worked in a lab then it's very likely that you've ca you've come across sales professionals who have come to your lab to try to sell you a pipette or reagents or cell culture stuff like you're going to have encounter these people right i want you to take a look at the marketing material that they leave behind if you want to go into technical writing right i want you to take a look at how manuals are written how product descriptions are written if you want to go into regulatory writing you may want to maybe speak with a regulatory right somebody who is in regulatory affairs at a pharmaceutical company and learn about the processes there and the types of documents that you will be writing in that role once you've done this one of the things that you can do is that independently you can create okay you can begin using those pieces as templates okay you can create your own pieces of content now most of the time when people talk to me and ask me about how I enter this role my story is not very typical so I don't like to use it as the standard because the reason is because I've been blogging since 2014 right in 2017 after taking a course a uh, writing course with Holly Potter Johnson I learned how to do freelance writing and at that time I was not even writing primarily in the life and health sciences space even though that was my background I wrote content for personal finance companies I wrote content for I wrote product descriptions okay uh, for like companies not in this arena at all and then slowly shifted into writing for health tech companies i had a home health agency as a client i had a physician's office as a client and then built my skills from there so I, this has been building up for a really long time but you don't necessarily need to have all the experience that i have what you need the most what you need the most right is to be able to show your potential employer or if you plan on maybe trying this as a freelancer first, your potential clients, right, that you can write, that given a piece, you can put together a coherent thought process on paper and present that and communicate well. And if you show that, right, to um, an individual who wants to hire you and it's good, they're more likely to say yes to you than if you don't have a portfolio at all. I am going to be releasing another video on Monday where I show you how you can curate your portfolio, or how you can build a portfolio for yourself as a writer using two tools, all right? Um, and one is Contently and then one is your own writer website. I'll go more into depth on that in that video but and so if you're watching this in the future and that video has already come out go check out that video after this video but you're going to have to have some kind of portfolio now you 
don't need very extensive experience, right? You just need maybe three or four pieces that are well written, well done. Make sure to proofread, right? And then have those ready to show to anybody that asks you. One of the things that I personally do is actually leave a link to my portfolio on my writer resume. Yes, I do that. Um, <laughs> I have put that on my writer resume because then it gives somebody that's reviewing my resume a quick way to like check me out beyond my LinkedIn profile to writing samples that I have and that should be able to convince them that I'm somebody worth taking a chance on. One other suggestion I'm gonna make here as well as you get prepared to enter into science and medical writing is to check out organizations like the American Medical Writers Association. Um, they're really good. They have a publication that comes out every month um, that has various, uh, you know, covers various subjects in scientific and medical communications. I think it's worth it to subscribe to that. It's not free. Um, you do have to pay for it. Uh, pay, once you become a member, I think you get that. There's also the National Association of Science Writers and both organizations have like webinars, courses that you could check out. All right. I personally, when I started, did not take those courses at first. I took like general freelancing courses. I have my own freelance writing course. I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description as well as my book. You can check those out if you're interested. But these courses, webinars, also really do a really good job of explaining things that you may not understand yet for maybe let's say you want to learn more about regulatory writing amwa has modules on that and you can delve deeper into that and learn what that's about so that you can prepare for interviews for instance also let me say this so even though it may seem like oh like i'm hearing so much about medical writing these days I'll be honest with you that there are not a lot of good writers out there, <laughs> okay? There are not a lot of good writers out there. And this is not just in the medical writing space. This is just across the board. Yes, there are writing opportunities and writing can pay very well and can be lucrative, but there are not a lot of great writers. And this is where you and I have opportunity, right? You can train yourself to be a good writer. Do some people have a natural flair for things? Yes, I would say so, but I have built this skill over time, right? And so you, you will have to practice writing. Over time, you realize that your writing just gets better and better. Okay, so I remember that when I started blogging, all right, now if I go back and read some of the things I wrote in 2014, I'm just like, oh, cringe. <laughs> Don't think you need to be the best writer out of the gate, right? You need to have some writing skill to get started, but realize that once you get into your writing role, right, you continue to build that skill and also whilst you're waiting to get into that role you can practice your writing and so like I said you know you create those three portfolio pieces you can begin a blog you can begin writing on a place like medium.com as you build that writing muscle you do get better now there are two books I'm going to recommend for you to read if you want to definitely get better with your writing one of those books is on writing well by William Zinn you can get it on Amazon. I got this on Amazon. It's a really good book on just writing well. That's why it's got on writing well. Then you also have William and Str um, William Strunk's Elements of Style. Um, really, really good book. This is not a book that you kind of sit down and just kind of read. It has just style, stylistic things. <laughs> That's how best I can describe it. But both books are really good books for you to check out. I'm also going to leave links to these books in the description. Good books for you to check out if you want to just learn the basics of writing well. And again, remember that this is a continuous learning process. But if you do the things that I shared in this video, which is number one, start thinking about building a portfolio. Number two, practice your writing. Self-educate using some courses courses. Um, AMWA is a good organization. NSAW is a good one. I also have shared some links to my own resources I've created in the description. And then, you know, these books right here, definitely recommend for any aspiring writer. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, why aren't you hit that subscribe button to join this community?